I'll flip you around here. Okay. Okay, so we're going to get started. It's uh, 6 11. So Perfect. I'll just do a quick intro here um, to any everybody who um, is new. My name is Andrea Stevens, and I am the co founder of Mall of the Arts. And I'd like to welcome you to the Indigenous Beading Workshop, and we're super excited about this workshop. Um, but before we begin, I just wanted to go over some Zoom online and workshop elements just to make sure that you have the most enjoyable experience tonight. So first off, I'd like to make sure that everybody keeps their microphones muted during our session, unless you need to speak, and then you can raise your hand and unmute yourself. Um, we also encourage you to use the reaction button that's located at the bottom of your screen and just occasionally check the chat box located at the right side of our screen here and there will be communication and notes in the chat box there. Uh, also please make sure, I sent a message out to everybody, but please make sure that you have some scissors and some glue for this session. Um, hot glue or Gorilla Glue would be the best. Uh, but whatever you have, make sure that you also have a clear workspace because when you're dealing with those little tiny beads, you don't want them and needles falling on the floor. Uh, the more time you have to bend over and pick them up, um, the longer it'll take you to finish your product. Um, and for anyone that didn't receive their beading package on time, um, I think that uh, we've only got six people online right now, so I, I might repeat this later on, but just let us know in the chat box. Uh, the workshop total is we've accounted for about four hours. Um, so yeah, it's really time consuming. Um, but uh, so what we've done is Robin has agreed to host again next weekend, same place, same time. So if you need more time to complete your projects, then you're welcome to come back next Saturday. And, um, and then especially if you haven't received your package, then I'll be recording the session tonight. And then once you record your or once you get your package, uh, you can follow along on the recording and then log in again next Saturday and Robin will help you finish up. Um, so stay tuned. And uh, so last of all, I want to give a special thanks uh, going out to Manitoba, Kiwakunoi, Okimakinak, MKO for sponsoring this entire series. Uh, we've had a series going on for the last uh, month now. And also to Charles Kidd, our biographer and social media marketer. He works very hard to bring the, um, the workshops to you in marketing. And uh, just to note that our next workshop topic, not date, uh, will be upcycling with kids on April 24th. And now I would like to bring greetings to, uh, or I would like to bring in, introduce Melanie to bring greetings from MKO. So Melanie? Hi. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Melanie Ferris, and I work. I do communications at Manitoba Wiki Wanaui Oki Makanak. There's that echo is gone now. Thank you. Um, I just want to uh, bring greetings on behalf of Grand Chief Garrison Seti. I work with him, and he is, uh, you know, concerned about the mental wellness of everybody during the ongoing pandemic. So he asked that MKL provides some online workshops to help with um, people's mental wellness. So I'm glad that you're all here and I would be very interested uh, to see which communities you come from. So if you were able to type that in the chat box, that would be very interesting for me. And uh, I'm one of the people who didn't receive their beating kit, but I am super interested to hear from the facilitator, the teacher today. I have read about her in the media. She is someone who um, stands up for the rights of Indigenous people. And I know she's a role model for young women who want to go into aviation. So I think it's really cool that we get to hear from her and uh, learn a little bit about the art of beating from her. Um, and I am a beginner beater, so I'm very interested. I have some beads here and I'm going to just uh, work on a different project from you guys maybe, but I'll learn as I listen. And uh, I want to thank Robin and I want to thank Andrea and everybody else who um, put their time into making this workshop a reality. Hi, Elsie from York Factory. Um, awesome. Thank you so much, Melanie. Thank you. Great. Okay, so now we will introduce you to Robin, who is our workshop teacher for tonight. Um, and uh, uh, Melanie's already given a great introduction to her background and history. She's super excited to be passing this on to uh, you folks here. So here is Robin. 
Robin? Can you see me? <laughs> yes, we Sorry, see you. No, Great. Just trying to zoom in here a little bit. All right. Thank you guys so much for letting me host a workshop and especially Dan Pio for uh, sponsoring the event. I'm really excited about this. Uh, for those of you that don't need, know me, my name's uh, Robin Schlecka. I'm from Woden, uh, registered with uh, Pemichi Quebec or Cross Lake First Nation. Uh, I've been living in Thompson for most of my adult life now, and, and uh, I serve the North Flying Medivacs. So, sorry, I didn't realize my hair was going to be this bad. But uh, <laughs> um, I started doing bead work uh, when I was a teenager, and I took some time off from it. And then, actually, when my second daughter was born, um, I really wanted to custom a pair of custom muckbucks with her name on them when she was six months old, like my granny had made for me, and I couldn't find anyone to make them. So I actually took the pair that I had, ripped them apart, put them back together, and figured out the pattern. So a lot of my stuff has been self-taught. So I'm really excited to teach other people how to um, do some beadwork. And uh, there is an ulterior motive of this class because eventually we're looking at possibly doing some moccasin workshops or baby wraparound workshops. Um, anything that anyone might be interested in learning, I'm more than happy to help you any which way I can. Oops. <laughs> Sorry. Just going to stop my video. There we go. Sorry, can you hear me, Andrea? Yeah, I can hear you, Robin. Okay, She's just okay. switching the camera around, everybody. She's got two yeah, cameras no, sorry, going sorry. here. <laughs> I'm here. Yeah. Flip this around. Okay. So we'll get right to it. So I'm really sorry for those of you who weren't able to get your packages. I had sent them out. Um, I was a little worried about postage, but none of them had been returned back to me. So if you're, we're going to record this session as well. And I'm really hoping that. Uh, if you're able to follow along with the video later, that's great. If not, I'm going to leave my uh, my email addresses there with everyone. You're more than welcome to get in touch with me. I'll leave my phone number. We can FaceTime, whatever you need to help you out. So when I sent these out, um, I just have to set this up a little nicer here. If you're going to do some beading, the first thing you need is a big cup of tea, just to start with. I'm pretty picky about that. We only do red rose or uh, blue ribbon in my place. Now, your package, we would have received all of these items, except in smaller quantities. So these are actually just plastic cabs, they're called. And you can order them from just about any beading website. A lot of my supplies comes from Dakota Beads. Um, it's on Facebook. And I order them by the tubes, or you can order them by the tanks. And these are the beads that you're, or sorry, the needles that you're going to be using. This is John James short uh, beading embroidery. Anytime you're doing um, any kind of beadwork that involves sewing, you always want the short one. If it doesn't say short, they're going to end up being double the length. Anytime you're doing beadwork, um, like being an ornament, or you just using beads then you're going to want a longer one for that. So these are the other ones. These are in uh, Thompson as well. If you're in Thompson, they're at the Eagle's Eye. And these ones, the Arctic Trading Post was selling them. And then when they uh, sold out, I basically bought them out of all of their needles so that I wouldn't run out anytime soon. And these, one of the things is that I save you the trouble of having to glue this on. So I'm usually using either E6000 or Gorilla Glue. And all this is, is a stiffened piece of felt. So you'll notice it's a little bit thicker. It's not floppy the way normal felt is. And that's all it is, is a fabric. These is going to, are going to be the backing of your earrings. And these actually come in sheets. And I grabbed these off Amazon. I believe it was about $20 for 30 sheets of these. And it's kind of a faux leather type of thing. And then these are what the cabs actually look like when you buy them. So when you get them, some of them are glass. These ones are really nice. I hope you do something good with that. They're all different shapes, sizes. And I couldn't find a pair of earrings, but this is basically your finished project with your keychain that you're going to be working on. So sorry, the zoom gets a little funky. And this is one of my first keychains. You can tell because I didn't quite tie up the knot. And then there's the back piece so you can see how, it all, how it's all going to fit together. 
So we'll go ahead and get started. I'm going to be showing you, I'm going to be doing this into a small keychain. Um, maybe not today, but I'm definitely going to go with the earrings because the earrings are going to take a little bit longer. So if your earrings aren't separated, you're going to want to go ahead and separate them. I got some black beads and some white beads. And all you're putting down here for your workstation, it's really important not to just dump out beads on um, a slippery surface like your counter or anything like that. If you have a small plate, you can put them on a small plate. If you have a bit of fabric or something soft or porous for it to sit on, that's going to make your life a lot easier because they're not going to roll away on you. So the first thing we're going to talk about is this. So we're not gonna get super excited and just rip it out and pull it apart. And this is actually beading thread. It comes in spools like this. This isn't your average cotton thread because cotton will let go. This stuff is really, really strong. It's a really lightweight nylon. Um, and anytime you ask for beading thread, that's what they're gonna give you. But it's a really lightweight. Oh, and some of my um, earring kits with the black, Unfortunately, some of you ended up with a leather thread, so it's a little bit thicker. So if you're having trouble working with it, you're gonna have a spool of spare thread in there as well. And that is going to make your lives easier. Oh, of course I would say that and then go and get mine finger. One second. So it's not one continuous piece that you actually have, it's two separate needles. So there's one, and there's the second one. So just try to straighten them out a little bit because the string likes to twist. So I figured we didn't want to fight with um, waiting for everyone to thread their needles either. So I figured we'd start off without having to worry about that. Yeah. All right, so the method we're gonna be doing is actually the two needle method. Uh, the one needle method is considered to be a little bit easier, I think, by a lot of people. Um, the two needle I like to use for jewelry, specifically because it's gonna stay a little bit longer. Oh, I'm sorry, if you hear an angry baby, that's my uh, youngest there. She's a bit of a firecracker. So when we think about your pattern, the first thing I want you to look at is, see this is a solid black center and then it's white and purple alternating all the way around and then it's black and then the edging is a different color. Now you, if you'd like to, you can just do one solid color around, a second separate color around and the third one as well. And you have more than enough beads to be able to do it. It doesn't seem like there's much in these packages, but when you look at how you, you actually need to go around here, it's quite a bit in there. So mine, you can have this shape of earrings. There's all different kinds that I had sent out there. Or you can have keychains, and they're a lot bigger than this one, and they might be shaped a little bit differently. But I try to make them a little bit different for everyone. So we're going to start by spilling some beads. And we're just going to spill out the color that we want. All right, so for the two needle method, so I'm going to go up as quickly as I can here. You can start from wherever you want. And what you're going to do is bring the needle from the back. Your thread is already knotted. And you're going to have it right beside. And you're going to pull it up. And through. Just like that. Now, if you've got a heart or, or a heart keychain or anything like that, you're going to want to start at this point. So you're going to come up in the middle of that point and do exactly what we're doing here. So once you've come up, you're going to put on some beads. Put a specific number or amount.
It's a little awkward doing this with my setup because you have to. Mm. I'm just going to keep adding beads. Now, when you're buying beads, I would strongly recommend buying them in Hanks, they're called. And the reason being is that it is so much easier stringing beads than when you buy them in tubes and you have to put them on individually. Oh, there's my baby doing her learn call. <clears throat> All right, so we have, if I sound muffled, it's because I hold things in my mouth while I'm meeting as well. That's normal. Okay, so what we're going to want to do is put, tack these beads down. So in order to do that, what I usually do is hold the end of the string with my pinky, and then I'm going to pin down four beads like that. So I'm holding on to it any which way you want to hold the string tight and then push these all the way to the end of the string. Now, what we're going to do is start from the outside two beads between bead number two and three. Sorry, this zoom's a little awkward. And we're going to pull the string all the way through. And then we're going to go on the opposite side of that. Now, when we pull this through, all we're doing is securing those two beads to our stiffened felt. Now, those aren't going anywhere. Then we're going to add two more beads and do it again. Um, between number and four and five, sorry. Right there, coming up. Go down as close as we can to this cab here because we need to keep it really tight. And when you pull it through, you just want to watch to make sure that it lays the beads where you want it to. So now with me holding this tight, you can see that these four beads are tapped. Oh, sorry, that's my dog. They're not going anywhere. I'm sorry, with the zoom, it's hard to see. That's all we're doing. So again, I just wrap it around my finger to hold it tight. And then we're adding two more beads. So there should be four floating in there. And then you're only using it so that you can go between the two. Come up. And then go back in. And then the string is going to hold them tight. I'm getting better at doing this with the camera instead of looking at the actual reading project. So we're just going coming up and then sewing down and tacking it down. Uh, I should have used the black thread so you can see, but it actually creates a bit of a zigzag pattern on the back. So whenever you see people who've done a lot of that, we've worked on one particular 
project. It basically looks like a whole jumble of knots on the back, and that's pretty well what we're doing. So I read about some uh, a beater on one of my sites too. She was saying that she was having issues with uh, you know, and she ended up using a hose head to hold the beads tight for her. We got one angry puppy. Good girl. Come on. There it go. It's all right. It's okay. Oh, yeah. We are using both needles. So this is where your first one was. Where you can the bottom at the beginning and it just stays there. So this is your beads, uh, your needle specifically for beads. So we're not having to sew with that. And then this one that we're using, the other one is specifically just to tack down the beads. So we have this one, uh-oh. <laughs> just don't pull too hard. Nylon's pretty forgiving. It's kind of like um, if anyone's ever gone fishing and you opened up your first pickle rig, and you pulled it out and you just tugged on it. You got this huge knot. That's kind of what nylon thread is like. So if you get too tangled, you got spare thread there, just be delicate when you're pulling it out and pulling it apart and you should be fine. So they call it two needle method, but you are using two needles, but you're only using one to do the sewing. The other one is just to hold on to the beads for you. Oh no. There we go. Now, a lot of times you get a knot up here with nylon. If you just kind of gently pull it back a little bit, a lot of times it'll untangle itself. Like I said, it's not like your regular cotton thread where everything's going to be knotted all the time. Oh, sorry. I'm hoping I use a two needle method too, especially for my amps, for moccasins and Netflix, because the pattern seems to stay a little bit longer as well. And I want you guys to know this is a basic beading project, but this is one of the really important fundamental skills of being able to. So if it's not looking 100%, do not be hard on yourself. I am self-taught and I've been doing this for over a decade and uh, I still look at other people's work and think, man, I wish I could bead like they do. So I really wish I would have had some of my first uh, works and I could have showed you well. It's just a lot of hand stitching. Catherine, did you manage to get untangled? Yes, they did. <laughs> Perfect. I know it seems confusing, but this other needle that we were using in the first place, it just kind of sits there. 
it just hangs out here. It's not doing anything. The only thing we need that needle for is when we pick up beads. And then this one we only use to tack down beads. So the beautiful thing about this too is Mother's Day is just around the corner. Okay, we've got a special mom, an aunt, or a sister, a daughter with kids, maybe you're a cuckoo. This will make a really good homemade gift. So depending on where you are right now, you can see when you run your finger around it, if you're pulling it tight, that these beads aren't really going anywhere. They'll wiggle a little bit side to side, but they're hanging on here. I'm trying to give you an idea of what it's going to look like. It's very meticulous work. It needs a little bit of patience. But once you've actually uh, got the basic skill down, you'd be surprised at how therapeutic this is. So I'll start. That's my regular friend. Watching a movie. With Robin, hey, it's Andrea. I just wanted to let you know we have a new participant. Darian Blacksmith has joined us. So I just wanted to. Uh, welcome Darian in and don't be shy if you have any questions uh, Robin's just uh, just getting started with the earrings so um, if you have any questions you can message in the chat and uh, we can catch you up You're welcome Darian so we just need you to take your stuff out I can't remember if I sent you keychain or earrings but you're gonna have a few bags of beads in there. You're going to have either the keychain or the um, earring pieces. And then you're going to have a piece of fabric with a cab glue to it. And you're going to have two sets, what looks like two sets of uh, string. Actually, one is just spare string and one is uh, two needles. So the first thing you're going to want to do is to get the two needles out of the plastic bag and uh, just make sure that they don't tangle up. Straighten them out a little bit if you need to. And as soon as I'm done with the scroll, I can show you exactly what it is to do. Okay, so you're doing it. You're going to have two needles. So the first one's going to come up right beside anywhere that you need it to. Bead, where you want your bead and then you're going to pull it all the way up and through and then you're going to take that needle and that's going to be your beads needle and that needle is specifically just to pick up beads So, and also just a disclaimer, make sure, Darian, that you don't lay your beads on the table or anything where they can roll away all over the place. 
or anywhere within your kid's reach if they're hanging around you. Well, I'll tell you, when I first started, I used to rip things apart and put them together so many times. Sometimes I had to throw them out and start all over again. You're just learning. One of the hardest things, besides just the technique, is making sure that you're getting the right supplies. And I think that was one of my biggest issues with learning, was that I was constantly ordering supplies from places I didn't know and then getting a product that didn't work for me and then getting upset and saying, well, I give up. I can't find the right beads because the ones in Walmart don't look right. Or I can't find the right needles or the right thread or I don't know what to, you know. <clears throat> the good thing about that now is that if you happen to be in Thompson, uh, the Needle's Eye, we've been working on our uh, lingo there and kind of with the stuff that we need. And um, they've been more than happy to accommodate since the Arctic Trading Post shut down. So they've replaced a lot of that board. The only thing I would discourage you from is buying leather from there unless you, you felt it. So when you're buying leather, for example, to make a pair of slippers or wraparounds, just make, make sure it's not too, it doesn't feel like cardboard, it's not too heavy, or you're going to have a lot of trouble sorting. So I've received bad leather, I've received bad lining, I've received bad thread. I went through all those expensive mistakes now, so if there's anything that you guys need, anything you're interested in trying, let me know and I'll lead you in the right direction. In Winnipeg, you have, um, so I just trying to think here, Winnipeg Outfitters, I believe. And there's Bessies, which is uh, near the new gas station, uh, the Chitty Gas Station in, by the airport mm -hmm. there. Uh, there was another one I was at. A lot of them seem to be off of Main Street. And that's also where my fur and leather suppliers from too is right, right off of Main Street. I don't know what it's going to be. Trying around. No, do not feel obligated to do three or four or five rings around these earrings or that keychain. If you're happy with one or two, by all means. Everybody's different, and that's why it was so important for me to send out so many different types of packages. I sent out uh, earrings like this, except there were turtles on them, and I think paws, I want to say. I sent out some that were like this, but they were glittery. I sent out some beautiful keychains. All right, guys, I got a troublemaker here. 
No, don't get, no, 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 no. Don't get the dog at all. Robbins is looking beautiful. Is anybody brave enough to hold those up to the camera? Sweet. Oh, I love those colors. Like a seashell. <laughs> Can't see. <laughs> Yeah, we try to make both kits very, very individual. And it was just basically picking some of the nicest stuff that I had, matching some colors. And I fought with those for a long time, those little kits to make sure that they seemed uh, just right. All right, so it looks like I might actually drop it. Yeah. Don't forget, just drop your beading, the one that's for beads, just drop it. You don't need it while you're doing this. You'll notice that if you're trying to hold two needles, you're going to end up getting them tangled up. So what I like to do is just leave it hanging out there. And I just pick up this piece of string, hold it tight, and that's all I'm worried about. So that's kind of just sitting down here, dragging behind here. And then I have this one up closer to you guys. And that's what's keeping it from getting tangled up. So don't even worry about that one, the other string. A little hard to see around these corners. Now, when you're doing the first one or two rings, depending on how many you're doing, it's okay if you go from the inside to the out or the outside to the end. That's not going to matter. But when you're at the outside edge, you're going to want to switch it around and you're going to want to go from the inside out. And the reason I say that is because you're gonna be trimming that edge off. And if you've gone a little bit further out than you meant to, um, it's gonna get cut off and then your thread's gonna be snipped. So it's a lot easier to tuck it in tight, closer into the leaves here, when you're doing it from inside out. But see if it's easier to go outside in while you're doing your first row, that's fine. And that's a lot easier for me. I always do outside in. And I made this pair of beautiful earrings. And the only reason I say that is because I didn't realize one of them had gone too far. And I had to start all over again on it. It's a little hard to solve which the thread when you break one right in the middle. Last couple. He's not barking at you. Kicker. Come on. Shh. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to get here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tack down Go one more piece. Go watch out the window. Go see. There we go. Okay, so when it looks like we're completely going done going all the way around, it's going to look like this. But we have this bead piece, right? Our first needle that we started working with. So what we're actually going to do, and I really hope you guys can see this, is there was the first bead we started with right here, right? So we're going to take this string. And we're going to go into that first bead. 
and the second beer. Oh, sorry. It's a little awkward because I actually have you guys set up on like this grill type thing so that I don't have to hold the phone and you can see my hands, but I'm trying to bead through the phone. See, so what we're doing is we're going back in through those first two beads. And what that's gonna look like when we pull it through, is that you can't tell which bead started it and which bead ended it. Oh, that one's a little crooked. Now you're stuck with this piece here and you're wondering what to do. So you're gonna put it through into the back again. So that first nail came up in one spot and went down in one spot and that was it. And this is what we're looking like now. So we finished the first row, it's snug, it's tight, and both needles are on this side, as they should be. Now, you'll notice too, when you're done your first row, that one thread is gonna be substantially longer than the other. The thread that you use for your beads always will be, because the one you've used to go around, you've used a lot more thread. So because these needles are the same size, you can use the shorter piece for your next row, and come back up again. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna make sure that you don't run out of one thread before the other. There you go. So I'm gonna figure out what colors I want now. Got a little blue. I grabbed blue, purple, and gold because I figured it'd be a little bit easier for you to see on the camera with this. Thread. That'd be a little easier, easier to teach. <laughs> All right. What I'm going to do is use my white as a primary color. And I'm gonna switch it up a little bit. So we'll do oops, white, blue, purple. Oh, actually, you know what? Let's do white, blue, white, purple, white, gold. And you guys can do whatever kind of pattern you want. Um, there should be a minimum of four bead colors in each of these packages. And there's plenty of beads to go around for what you need it for. So um, I wouldn't say just use one color all the way around. No, you're not going to have the beads to do that. Um, if you use the white or the black, depending on which package you got as your primary, then it's going to make things a lot easier because you know you'll have enough beads to go around. But your pattern is, there's more than enough beads to figure out whichever pattern you would prefer. I'm just going to keep on with that. And what I'm doing is white, blue, white, pink, white, gold, white, blue, white, pink, white, gold. Oh no. Do we want to do a poll now, Robin, while we let some, <laughs> some people catch up? Yeah, That's sorry. Not, not very, very exciting. <laughs> oh no, it's super cool. 
I feel, I feel like you're making it look easy because I'm not really one with good dexterity. <laughs> and you're just like, those beads are tiny, so I am lot. I couldn't have been more noticeable. I was supposed to go on with my beads and get a bunch of beads done. And one thing I didn't know is that there's actually a thing called um, uh, prepartum carpal tunnel syndrome or something like that. So believe it or not, I got stuck sitting at home and I couldn't even use my hands to bead. Oh, that was true. That, <laughs> that doesn't surprise me, but I can imagine feeling stressed <laughs> that you're trying to do something to alleviate stress and it's stressing you out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You have to drink or anything. It's kind of pain. Okay, let's launch a poll here. I'm going to launch one. And for anyone that's kind of like keeping up, go ahead and answer. And Robin will uh, give you a thumbs up. Oh, you. I think uh, you put the wrong, what are some materials, the original edition of Speedwork? I think it was supposed to be, we're not made of. I think we might have. Uh... No, no, it's trick questions. <laughs> they can pick as many answers as they want. Oh, that's oh, what that's it is. Yeah. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. Let's see it here. There we go. So, like Daryl Buck did, um, uh, he did indigenous drumming a couple of weeks back, and he offered his CD out to any participants that answered, whether it was right or wrong. What can we give our participants for answering polls for our session? Like, yeah, maybe send like the opposite of whatever they have. Yeah, whatever they have. Um, like I said, mother, well, probably have a fourth lady in our life. Okay, so look forward to an extra kit if you answer the polls for tonight's session. I know it seems very meticulous, and uh, I'm with you on that. But like I said, once we uh, get more efficient, it becomes extremely relaxing. So I'll show you guys what I was talking about with the colors. So I did, for the second row, I did white, blue, white, pink, white, gold. And this is kind of what it's starting to look like. So you can kind of see at least we have a bit of a pattern going around. Now, one thing I don't want you to stress about is whether it's going to match up all the way around. And that I don't worry about too, too much here. Just because. Just because it's not a poll. So I just ended the polling there, Robin. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sharing the results, and then you got uh, you can uh, say what you think about the results. We got um, so we have fifty percent. What are some materials the original indigenous beadworks were made of? And the choices we had were shell, pears, bones, or stones. And we had 75% say stones, 75% say bones, and 50% said shells. Nobody said pears. 
I feel like Shaw's all right. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah, it I think it was three. Yeah, all three. Right on. Yeah. And then the second one was, what did the Europeans bring to make additional beadworks? And they can pick as many as they want. So we had 50% said glass, 25% said ceramic, and 50% said plastic. I believe it's glass and ceramic. No, you got it. Yeah. They do have plastic, but they're not traditionally used. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's kind of a tricky one for all of us, I think, because you would think plastic would have been introduced by Europeans, but um, yeah, that's that's a tricky one because I'm not too sure like yeah, when that would have been introduced yeah. to beadworks. Yeah, because yeah. I'm beautiful beads from our class. Yeah. And the only real one is pears, and uh, nobody picked that one. <laughs> Right on, guys. Thanks. All right. So if you happen to make it to your second row, we're not going to tack down every second one now. This one, we kind of wanted to keep it really tight. And it can be anywhere from tacking two down, three down, four down. Just bear in mind, the further down that you're tacking them, the looser they will be. So this one, I'm going to tack every third bead. And the reason being is that I'm going to have an extra layer around this yet, too. That's going to help hold it in place. So we're doing the same thing. I've got four beads down here. These first three are tacked. And then I'm gonna come up behind the third bead and tack that down. Oh, we're stuck now. Oh, that's right, I'm using a little, there's a teeny tiny knot in them. And that's the thing too, if these things get knotted and there's a tiny little knot here, um, if you just pull, it will just come through because what you're sewing on is just a stiffened felt. So it's not very um, sturdy and it's a really strong thread. It's just a pain because you keep forgetting about it. So alternatively, if it's annoying you like this is annoying me, I'm just going to cut the string where the knot is. And the ones that I don't really understand, I can understand that I know we had participants from Moose Lake, um, Ocean, uh, Winnipeg. Neverville, where else did I ship? Cross Lake, Brochet, uh, Oxford House. Now, the ones that don't make sense to me if they didn't arrive are anywhere in, in Northern Manitoba because the mail actually goes out every day. And for a while, my sister was driving the mail truck. So the mail goes from Thompson to Woboden and then the mail truck comes in from Woboden. So it's almost pretty well direct. The stuff from going to Oceana or Moose Lake or Western Manitoba, that stuff I can understand if it took a little bit longer. But I really don't understand why anyone from Cross Lake wouldn't have got it. So I'm really sorry about that. So I'm just hoping, Robin, that it's not going to be um, sent back to you because of some kind of mailing restrictions or whatever. Yeah, um, or, or something. Um, one of the things I noticed too is that every seems to use box numbers and cross is uh, doing street addresses. So that kind of caught me a little bit when I was writing them out, but um, I didn't think too much of it and thought, okay, because all the participants were cross like used um, street addresses. So if anyone is from cross like on here, can you just confirm that it's not box numbers that you guys use? Well, I don't think we have anyone right now. And I guess if any of the participants have uh, friends that signed up or they know people that signed up and didn't show up because they didn't get a package, to make sure that they message us and let us know because we can either, I don't know if we can track it, Robin, um, but uh, we'd either track it or maybe 
maybe send them out another package and then find out what happened with Canada Post. Yeah, absolutely. And then I can double check the address, make sure it worked. Tangled. Like I said, we're doing threes this time. So it's gonna take it's a lot quicker when you're doing threes or fours. So these kits, I can actually show you um, what happens when you get a little bit addicted to doing art, if you wanted to. <laughs> Just gonna take a quick break here. All right. These are my extremely disorganized sewing boxes. And they're full of goodies. I got rope, plastic bags. There's a lot of cabs sitting here that already pre-glued. And then this is my BB box. So these are literally just jumbles and jumbles and jumbles of beads. And the problem with buying beads is that you say, okay, I have red beads, right? So here's some red beads. But then you're like, no, 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 these are red beads. These ones are a bit darker, but I like these beads. Okay, but, but wait, wait, wait. Do you have the shimmery red beads though? So next thing you know, you've ordered literally hundreds of different colors. And however, Robin, where do you get your beads from? Can we get them from dollar stores or where do you I, get those I, from? I would never buy beads from uh, dollar stores. Uh, the reason being is that they're not true to size. So these ones that you have, these are usually seven to eight dollars per vial or seven to eight dollars per hank, depending on uh, where you're getting them from. And that's another thing I forgot to mention is that uh, some of them are size tens and some of them are size elevens. So you'll notice if you happen to have some size eleven beads in your kit, I don't know if you can see this, but see the blue is a size eleven and the ten or the white is a size ten. Um, whenever you're doing beading, I use a size 10 or 11. However, when you um, become very skilled or you really wanna do a really detailed project, you can even do a size 13 bead, but this needle won't work for you. So the size of her beads and needles is the same as piercing or anything else. It's the higher the number, the smaller it is. So every, anytime you're doing a beading needle, it has to be a size 10. You're gonna have to get something a bit smaller to run a size 13 bead through. And a size 13 bead is substantially smaller than these. I've seen some work with them and it's amazing. I don't think I would ever have that kind of patience personally, but the people that do it are really good. So beads, I would never buy from Walmart. Don't buy from the dollar store. Um, do not order bulk on Amazon. Oh, sorry, that's my dog again. Um, always order them specifically from a place where you're going to get exactly what you need. These are Czech. I think they come from the Czech Republic. Uh, no, these ones are made in Japan. Um, so like I said, Dakota Beads is good. Winnipeg Outfitters is good. The Seas is good. Um, they do have some beads at uh, the Needle's Eye. However, if you're in Thompson and there's something in particular you're looking for, just hit me up. I'll be here and I can definitely help you out. So I'm not doing anything from a retail point of view, like a small business yet, but I'm really hoping to be able to get um, enough financing to have a bit of an inventory here so that it's a little more accessible and a little bit easier for people up north to get the stuff that they need. Because like I said, when you, you know, if you don't know any order, oh, I'm gonna order, you know, $100 worth of beads off of Amazon, this looks like a really great deal. And then you show up, and some of them are thicker, some of them are thinner, some of them are broken. And you're trying to do work like this where it's very important for the, everything to be uniform. Um, it just, it's so discouraging, right? And that's one thing I don't like 
when uh, people are trying something new or trying an art or a hobby or a project, it really, really helps me kind of have the resources there of um, getting exactly what you need and what quality you need. So like I said, hit me up. Hopefully by the end of the summer, I'm hoping to have a little bit of somewhat of an inventory at my home. And that would just be for anyone who is in a pinch. Oh, and here we go. Here's an example right now. I made a mistake. I don't know if you guys can see it. So the pattern was supposed to be white, blue, white, pink, white, gold. Let's see, I put an extra white bead in there. And I got this much left, plus the ones down there. So I'm actually going to leave that. And we call those our little spirit beads. And it's an error. It's a tiny little mistake, but it makes it very much yours. So if you find that you're making a pattern and one bead is out of place, that's actually not a bad thing. It's kind of like your little mark or your signature that you put on there. So it's kind of funny to talk about the feeding suppliers. I was actually going to open up a trading post here after the Arctic trading post shut down, but with COVID, it was an absolute nightmare even thinking about opening a small business. And so, Robin, what I was thinking when you're saying that is um, our participants should know that you have a profile on our website already. Um, no, no. So, um, I mean, this is something that me and Robin will talk about, but um, I think hopefully the the end goal would be to have a setup there where you guys can contact Robin as often as you like. And if there's things that you need or supplies that you need, then maybe we can just ship it to you right off of the website. Oh, that'd be so, Yeah. Yeah, like I have a inventory of stuff already. Um, like my beads don't look like much, but if they were actually sorted and put apart, you'd be pretty impressed with me. Uh, my furs I have, if you need any animal native to Manitoba, there's a really good chance I have it. If you need leather and you're in a pinch, if you need leather thread, if you need, you know, just little things for personal projects, um, I have that right now. And then once, like Andrew was saying, then we work on a retail level, then it'll just be available online. It'll be a lot easier to deal with. And when I ship something, it's 100% going to be what it is. There'll be no guessing if the beads are the right kind or the right size, or if the leather if the leather's going to be good for slippers or not. It's definitely going to be good. I'm picky about that. I go in person all the time. I go to Bill Ward. I drive the manager absolutely insane. But he's happy with me now because I spend a lot of money there too. I think the moccasin workshop might be a little bit different too, because there's probably higher quality or um, there's probably a lot more involved as far as product and uh, shipping goes with that. So, yeah, the shipping yeah, is going to be a little bit um, um, because it's in cases, it's, it's probably going to fit in a flat envelope, like a larger size flat envelope. And that's going to be a little more complex because I'm going to need to know ahead of time sizing colors, um, what kind of animal fur on the trim, and then have all that pre cut, pre measured. Um, so you'll basically get a kit like this beading kit, but the amount of stuff that goes in behind, you know, to get that kit together is you'd be surprised. So I keep pulling my, uh, um, so I'm trying to see it through the grills of my thing. This was the only way that I could get this phone set up so you could see my hands close is by putting it on a grill on hips. So that's kind of like the only thing that's been working. Good. Maybe white. 
Yeah. I'm just randomly launching polls whenever it dies <laughs> while we communicate. I know we should have had some beating music. There's this um, guy that I follow online on Facebook and he does the large beaded medallions and he uses the one needle method and it's a way way faster than this much faster than this and all he does is kind of play some music in the background and you see his hands and you watch him bead and he has hundreds and hundreds of followers <laughs> of women who just uh sit there and watch him bead whatever he's beating Maybe you're just, uh, maybe you're thinking of a collaboration here, Robin, <laughs> <laughs> because we have uh, Daryl who wants to do another workshop in the hand drum. Yeah. And yeah. he was thinking, he was trying to collaborate with me, like how we can come up with different ideas for participants to get involved with. Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't know how you would drum and beat at the same time, or maybe you have, <laughs> you know, <laughs> well, maybe you have. <laughs> Maybe you have some beating and some singing, you know, and we collaborate that way. But I don't know. There's just, there's some inspiration for some ideas here. Oh, yes. Yeah, so this kid has his lives and uh, turns out he's not even from Canada. He has the thickest American accent I think I've ever heard. And we have lots of cousins down in the U.S. I turns out. Okay, so we, I am at my second row here, the end of it. This, see, stuff like this happens where that thread gets a little bit loose. So we're just going to like pull it down and hold it there. So at the end, this is what it's looking like right now. And I need to get this in here. I'm kind of wishing I would have used a black thread so you can see a little bit more contrast. I'm just worried about that. We had done all the lighting and stuff yesterday and it seemed fine. But then now I'm kind of looking at it through the camera as I'm getting it done and it's a little harder to see any contrast between the white and the white. Okay, so that's full three. And that's really true. So oh, the only decision I need now is, oh, sorry, we've got to put it back. We put it through those two beads again. It's on top right now. So we're going to put it between a couple beads anywhere. And we're going to go down. So we're done a second row. And that's what it's looking like. So like I said, this one's going to be a little bit looser because we're only sewing every third bead. So don't expect it to be fully tight. And that's only because I'm planning on putting one more loop around. So I'm just going to mute you here for a second. I'm going to take a quick break. I just got to run out and I'll be back in a couple minutes. I'll leave the video on.
and a huge invest investment, definitely buy a size 10 beads because that way you can get a size nine glover's needle to do the beadwork exactly the way I'm doing it, except it's a barbed tip. It's not, um, it's not thin like a needle. And it goes through leather a lot easier. Now, if you like blue, kind of indifferent. You can go a little further. Yeah, that's cute. We'll go with that. And like I said, if you only want to do two rows, because it's going to be end up being a much larger earring with three rows. Every time you increase or do another row, you're increasing the size by double the width. So this is going to end up being a really large needle or a very large earring. So for the keychains, I definitely recommend the three. But for the earrings, I'm actually okay with this. So I dumped a bunch of blue beads for nothing. Oh, and another uh, tip or trick is that if you ever spill a whole bunch of beads on the floor, like my kids do on a regular basis, what you do is you put a pantyhose over the top of the vacuum hose, and then when you suck them up, they all get stuck. It's like kind of like working like a filter. Uh, so I'm okay with these. So I'm actually just going to pull this right back. I'm happy with these. So it's not going to be very tight, like I said, because of the third beat around, but I'm pretty happy with the way this is looking. So what I'm going to do is tie it off. Well, for next weekend too, I'm actually going to bead the keychain. So the people with the keychains can kind of understand um, how to assemble theirs. It's going to be a little bit different than the earrings. You also notice too with the earrings ones, the back piece was cut the same size as what this was. But with the keychains, there's a little bit extra, and there's actually a good reason for that. And that's that this little leather strap piece that's going to loop through your keychain is made out of this. So it's the same stuff. I just used two different colors for this one, but they're exactly the same material and that's how it's being folded together. And this one is ready to be trimmed. Start it up next one. Okay. 
Um, so if you're okay with ordering online or through Facebook, um, I would definitely suggest either Terry Beads, it's T-E-R-R-I Beads on Facebook, or Dakota Beads. And they are both from Manitoba. Uh, amazing service and really good quality products. And they do have posts on Facebook. They take um, e-transfers. For anyone who is worried about credit cards, because those are a pain, especially when you're putting your personal information over the phone. But at least uh, those companies specifically take e transfers. Yeah, I think that's good enough. Use the radio with NCI when you need it. I'm worried I'm putting some of you to sleep. I could always tell you some flying war stories if you wanted. Horrible weather. So planes, all kinds of craziness going on out there. And it's kind of funny, Andrea figured uh because I was flying that I would recognize all the postal codes. But the only issue with that is that when we're flying, we don't use postal codes. We use airport identifiers. So I was a little confused when she first said that, but then it made sense afterwards. <coughs> okay, you gotta put that down. <coughs> Carbon. So if any of you are curious, this is carbon. He's stubborn. There he is. What is he, three months old? Four months old. Four months old, next week. And he's a king corso. And a royal king with that. My hubby, I haven't gotten convinced to do some beadwork with me yet, but if I'm lucky and he's in the mood, he actually does some of the sewing for my liners for me because they're all done by, uh, they're all, all my sewing's done by hand. He looks pretty cute in his house robe sitting on the couch sewing a moccasin of liners for me. Really? <laughs> How are your hands, Robin? I've been poking myself probably about a hundred times already with the needle. So <laughs> I'm assuming you're not poking yourself anymore. You know, I, I don't think I even feel it anymore. Uh, this is kind of my off season right now. Um, so my fingertips, I don't know if you can see them, but they're actually a little calloused. I'm not good at wearing thimbles. They, they annoy me. So I actually sew leather without a thimble Ooh. and I've stabbed myself so many times I don't think it even phases me anymore but when the holidays come up if you were to take a look at my hands this is all callous this is callous this is calloused these three fingers get completely calloused I call them my cooking hands and my old boss, he's from Cross Lake, Tim Sweeney. I was telling him about that because I said, I'll never have a nice pedicure or soft hands or anything. And he said, you don't want that kind of stuff anyway. My mom told me that there's nothing better than a working woman who works hard with her hands. So don't feel bad about them.
So he was actually my favorite boss. I've been for him for a long time. All right, so if you need to re-thread your needle, now it, it looks like a big old mess. So you're gonna start from here and you're gonna pull this baby straight. If you're ever doing projects that call for just beads and it's not sewing onto something, it's sewing a bracelet or it's sewing an ornament or something like that, um, always wax your thread as well. If you don't buy pre-waxed thread, this is one thing that we're not doing because we're sewing into fabric. So we don't need to wax our thread, but if you're ever trying to get a, a free floating beading project to work and it's just not holding it, like even lighter cases or anything like those, those patterns that you've seen with the peyote stitch, um, get a candle made of beeswax and you're gonna do the same thing with your thread. You're gonna straighten it out, but you're gonna hold that wax here and run it along the edge of it. And all it does is it's almost like sinew. It's just gonna hold things a little bit in place better for you. So once you got it straightened out, that's kind of where a lot of your knots have come from. And it reduces the amount of the chances of not getting any knots after that. Because this stuff, when it's coming off of school, it's already kind of wound up and all twisted. And break in number two. So I'm gonna speed up a little bit here. I mean, I know it's a little different and it kind of sounds gross, but yeah, I just wet my finger and I use it to stick the beads to. I feel like that's a lot faster. So the worst ones, uh, actually, it's funny you talk about the needles. The worst ones I've done is from uh, sewing leather where I didn't realize how thick it was. So I've had needles up back this way where it wasn't even the stabbing myself part. It was the blunt end that went in and went all the way up through half my nail because I was pushing too hard on it. So at some point, something's got to give. And if it's not the leather, unfortunately, it's going to be your fingers. So. It sounds disgusting, but probably the first 20 pairs of moccasins I made, a um, little bit of blood on them somewhere. On the inside, they'll never know, but when you say your blood, sweat, and tears goes into learning how to make this stuff, you really need it. And that's actually kind of where I revamped doing this too, or restarted uh, beadwork and moccasins and wraparounds was because when I was working for Kim Sweeney, I flew the court party. And part of that is basically flying somewhere, sitting for eight hours and then flying home. And not all the airports at the time had Wi-Fi or reliable Wi-Fi. And um, there's not much to do for eight hours. I'm not organized enough to download movies. I don't really like sitting watching movies anyway. So I found that I had a beating bag and it was just um, about three or four projects that I would take with me. And whatever I felt like doing that day, I would take them, you know, land, have some breakfast, put the plane to bed, um, sometimes take a nap if I felt like it, get up and do some bead work, check on the plane again, especially in winter, and then do some more bead work. And then usually they showed up by then. So if you're trying to kill time, you're bored, this was the perfect project. And it's small enough to fit in a small bag to come with me wherever I was going. Except some places, Mary House and Cross Lake, I usually end up going out and wandering around. So that's where a lot of my family is. We're starting fresh again. Oh, the longer your thread is, the more likely it's going to be. Like I said, just pull it back the other way. And if you're finding you're getting knotted a lot, uh, just make sure you, you can cut off your thread and make it a little bit shorter. And that's going to make your life more easier if you're not 
How is everybody's sound? I'm having some issues, but if you guys are okay, then we'll then we're good. Uh, the sound is not great. Can you talk again, Darian? Uh, the sound's not too great. I can't really hear Robin. Oh. Am I being too quiet? Okay, I'm gonna look at your sound. Robin, when you have a moment, can you see if you have a turn on original sound um, icon or drop down menu on the left hand of your screen? And if it's blue, can you turn it to gray? And then say something. There we go. So doing anything? Okay. Right now it's good. Okay. So yeah, that's good. Speak loud. Oh, and How about you, Darian? Is that better? Yeah, that's better. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I already caught my feet right there the wrong way. Somebody who told you guys not to get tangled up. I'm really getting tangled up this round. So I'm actually going to cut this piece a little bit shorter so it's more manageable.
Trying to beat up hyperspeed now. We'll see if I can get through this. So I think we are actually, Andrea, we're gonna do the, the tacking down part today and then we'll finish them up next week. And there's not much to be done after this actually. There's a little more beading to do, but it's more just attaching it to the back piece and adding the, um, sorry, the earrings, and then we're good to go. So I know this is meticulous, but the end result, you're gonna be really happy. That sounds good, Robin, even if it's for an hour or whatnot, just to um, give people the week to kind of catch up like those that. Um... Yeah, so for example, this edging, this is all beads, right? And it's more meticulous, um, but it's a lot easier. But I think we're going to do a, a different style. It's called a Pico edge. And it takes up a lot less beads, um, but it's a lot quicker to do as well because we have to edge these all the way around. So we'll do the Pico edging. And then we will attach everything together. Um, the keychains, they might have more beads though. So if they want to do that style where it's easier but a little more time consuming, we can do that. So if you don't have glue this week, um, pick some up. We're going to need it for next week. And like I said, it's only 6,000 or Gorilla Goo or even hot glue, a hot glue gun. Um, anything that's going to secure it a little bit. If you don't have any next week, that's fine. It's just that it um, holds tight together a little bit nicer when you use glue to glue the two pieces together. So see when you get more efficient, you tend to move a little quicker. Um, and that's one of the advantages too of having a shorter thread is that you're going to be able to sew a little bit faster because you're not getting tangled as much. But the issue is that you're going to have to tie it off more.
Okay, so we we're on the 10 minute mark before seven here, but I just, um, looks like we're probably gonna be closing pretty soon. Just wanted yeah. to know if anybody had any questions or if anybody wanted to... Uh, Is there anything you wanted me to go through again? Yeah. Or if you want to just sneak a peek and hold up to the camera again before we go see your beautiful creations. Oh, I see Marilyn. How's it looking? Awesome, guys. Perfect. Yeah, I didn't get to try it, but I'm pretty sure you're way further than I would have. Holy <laughs> smokes, Darian. Darian joined in late and she's caught right up. Oh, wow. Perfect. You know, and I'm really like happy you guys jumped on and signed up and wanted to become, you know, a part of this because um, one of the things my dad always told me is that the things that you know, your knowledge, your skills, anything that you have, um, it'd be completely selfish if you, if you, you don't share them to the, with the world, right? And that's kind of one of the reasons why I don't always just do, you know, sell or mass produce and sell baby wraparounds. I have wraparound courses um, and I want to do more courses is just to educate more people to do things um, themselves and kind of um, inspire more people to become artists. Because I didn't think I was doing anything exceptional or anything different um, until I was called an artist at a craft show. And I was sitting there thinking, I've never been called an artist before in my life. That's crazy, but you don't even realize it. But yeah, if you are spending the time to do stuff like this, you absolutely are an artist. And I really wanna thank you guys for being a part of this course. And it starts one project at a time. And like I said, if anything else that anyone's interested in, I will absolutely point you in the right direction to get those supplies, get what you need. And we're gonna be talking about these uh, moccasin courses later. This is exactly the beading that you're gonna be doing on them. The only difference is that you'll be doing a lot less of it. So we won't have a plastic cab. We won't be beading all the way around. We'll be doing a really small um, piece and that's it. My cousin uh, from Nori House, she's been doing some work as well, but she was lucky enough to be taught by, I believe it's Rosa Scribe out in Nori House. Incredible artist. Apparently that woman takes less than a day to bead a full pair of mocklocks. So I'm just gonna finish this row and then we'll close off for tonight. It'll give everyone a chance to catch up, which will be great. I actually like the idea of this being broken up into two classes specifically for that reason. Um, it gives everyone an opportunity to be on the same page next week. I mean, it's been two hours and even I'm not done all four lines. And you know what, maybe I'll try to find some music for next week too. 
I'll just have to say a disclaimer, like I do not own the rights to any of this music playing. And I know this Zoom has been a little bit of a problem trying to get really close up to show you guys exactly what I'm doing. Um, but if there's anything else that would help you guys learn any questions, just let me know before we start next week and I'll happily get things set up for you. Hi Robin, it's Melanie from MKO chiming in. Um, I'm wondering if you could take like a couple pictures of your work and then maybe I could put them up in the Facebook group if anybody would like to see them there. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, my favorite was uh, 2019. I had um, a very premature baby and she spent 99 days in the NICU in Winnipeg. And when we were discharged, I actually made 15 keychains for the first 15 nurses that took care of her during the first 72 hours, she was critical. And wow. turned out beautifully and they're all a little bit different and they kind of show the different styles and patterns that you can use. So I'll be happy to post photos of those, I gotta find them. Um, did you wanna see some mock lock work or moccasin work as well? Sure, I was also thinking like pictures of what you've been working on tonight would be good. Okay, absolutely. Yeah, I'm going to get this one done up to, oh, I didn't need to end that. I'm going to, don't do this. You've got to finish the second row. I just don't, I need to pack this up and I don't want it to get tangled. Oh, and then if you wanted to see as well. Okay. I've had to work two phones because um, only one will show me a screen and then the other one shows me the chat. My first time having there we go. Okay, so this is not visible to the public, but it should be. Uh, so this is a site, it's called. Robin's Beauty and Free Creations. And these are just photos and stuff uh, that we've done in the past as well. We will take pictures of stuff that we've done. Photos. These are really popular this year. Those were a newborn set. And you can't really see that well, but it's beaded all the way around the edges as well. And that's going to be that Pico stitch that I show you tomorrow. And they were done in white, little paw prints. Uh, these are very similar to the ones I made for my daughter. Robin, you have to, uh, if you could just hit mute on one of your devices, just so we can get rid of that echo. It's okay. Sorry, I'm learning how to use my iPhone again. There we go. These are exactly the kind that I had made for my daughter the first time. Unfortunately, I don't have them anymore. But yeah, that's kind of an idea of some of the work that I've been doing, kind of some of the work from the workshops as well. These are actually maybe it's the um turn on or I'm so sorry to interrupt, but it's just a really high squeal. If you hit the turn on original sound and turn that to blue again. All right. Let me try that. You got me? <laughs> okay, echo's gone. Thank you. <laughs> Too complicated. <laughs> no problem. Okay. 
Okay, so we're gonna wrap that up for tonight. So that's two hours worth of work. I know it's a lot, um, especially the keychain people. Like I said, you might wanna do one more row. So this would be, this is three rows. It looks like four, it's actually not. That's actually just the way the edging is. So it was one row of black, one row of clear and red, and then one row of black again. So we'll wrap her up tonight. I'll take pictures of uh, what we're doing. I'm gonna get this little mod there, keychain done up as well. And these will all be beaded. So next week, what we're actually gonna be doing is we're gonna be trimming around the edge here. And we're going to be tracing it onto here and attaching it together and we'll be beating the edge around here. So that's gonna be the only beating for the next um, course is gonna be doing the edging. We're gonna glue that together and then we're gonna attach our earring to the top and those will be ready to go. So I know it seems like a lot of work because it's about four hours of work, but when you become a bit more efficient with it, you hopefully cut your time down in half, right? So same thing with the keychain. We're gonna be doing the exact same thing, gluing these two pieces together, trimming around the edge, beating that edge, but then we're also gonna have this little leather piece in there. I'm gonna show you put it between the two layers and how to sew around it so that you still have beading on both sides of it as well. So I'm good to wrap up here, Andrea. And don't forget awesome. to share. Yeah, no, that was, um, that looks super therapeutic from my end. I, I, I didn't get to try it, but just watching you <laughs> do that, it was, um, oh my gosh. Yeah, so they're really cute. It's a mom with two cubs. Oh yeah. <laughs> I sent out so um, cute. I didn't send out one package that I didn't like. Um, mm -hmm. like I said, I have a whole bunch of cabs, a whole bunch of different designs, bead colors and stuff, but I really wanted to take the time. And I sat there like a crazy woman on my couch with a bunch of beads, ripping them apart <laughs> and making sure that that. Them. <laughs> yeah, to make sure that everything was gonna look nice together. Um, so I really hope you guys like the packages, whichever ones you received, they were completely random. Um, but yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I appreciate that. I will, I'm going to try and contact some of the people that um, have not showed up tonight and just make sure that they, um, <clears throat> that they know that their packages are on the way and that there is a recording for this. And if anybody, if any of you ladies here know of anybody that is in that position, if you can let them know as well um and then yeah just message um either admin or artist at mallofthearts.com if you have any other questions or need to get a hold of robin or uh whatever the situation while you're working on your beating this week and yeah i want to thank you very much robin for stepping in and taking this uh workshop and then also offering your time again next week so i very much appreciate that um, so we can get as many people to catch up on this because this looks amazing. And you're right, Mother's Day is coming up. So um, excellent gift ideas there. And yeah, so if anyone has any questions, um, we're going to close off now, but just message us and we'll stay in contact throughout the week. And it will be same time again next Saturday at six o'clock. Same link. I'll leave the link open. Uh, if, if I need to change it, I'll let you know, but same link. Okay. All right. Thank you, Miigwech Kosi. Hopefully I'm saying that right. <laughs> Good night, everybody. <laughs> Thank you.